Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Enrichment Week presentation slash showcase. It's, it's really great to see quite so many staff from the college here looking at what all of, the, all of our students have been doing this week, and obviously students here willing and eager to see whether any of their submissions have been chosen as winners in any of our categories. We are going to start off with a brief explanation of what we have been up to. So with Enrichment Week, as uh, as you're all aware, as well as the academic lectures and uh, talks and seminars that we have in boarding been doing, a collection of different activities, creative activities and also some competitive, some of which are still going on as we speak. Um, I think there's we're in the quarterfinals of the pool tournament downstairs here in Shanthouse as we speak. But what I'm going to do today is present to you what we have finished so far and what we can uh, present to you today. So I'm going to start with the comic strip competition. So this was a new, a new thing I wanted to bring in this year. My brief that I gave to all of these students was to create a four panel comic strip. So there was no restriction or prompts in terms of what they could do. It just needed to be a comic strip with four panels. And I'm going to show you some of the highlights before presenting the winner. So the first one I'd like to show you all is this submission here from Ling. So we've got a lovely anime art style here. I'm sure a lot of students can relate to this one. Everything is important. Excellent effort there from Ling. Very, very good. That one came second in our competition. Another one I want to highlight is one which you might have seen already on the college social media. This was from Kim Ng, featuring a cute little dragon. I'm sure with Mr. Collier's uh, love of dragons, he would probably find something about this one to appreciate. Well done, Kim. And then, as you can see, we have a couple of others. I'm going to show you, let's show you Charmaine. So I did give the students uh, a vague couple of ideas to spark uh, some imagination. And one of them was Batman's laundry accident. And Charmaine actually did exactly that. Um, and as we can see, Batman is mixing his whites and his blacks and has ended up with quite a patchy cape at the end. So well done to Charmaine there representing Parry. We have another manga style one here from King. Very classical manga style based on Attack on Titan. Very popular anime. Now I'm going to admit, I don't know whether this is just because I haven't watched Attack on Titan, but I don't quite understand who these people are or the context for what's going on or why he's strong enough to simply lift someone up without really putting his back into it. But there we are. Thank you very much, King. And our winner is Silvana with this submission. I think we all took this one a little bit personally. A lovely rendition of the, of the college ID card by there. So quite cute, quite fun. I don't know whether to take the evil house parent thing personally. I mean, I don't know if it's supposed to be me. There aren't a lot of evil house parents here, so I, I I just have to go with who I think it might look like. There we are. So that was the comic competition. The winners being Silvana in first place and Ling coming in second. Thank you very much. Next up, we have the haiku. So on Wednesday, I gave the task of doing a hump day haiku, which obviously high, a hump day being a Wednesday. And we only had one submission for the Hump Day Haiku, and that was Getch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to present hers, because she sent it me in the form of a picture. So I'm gonna absolutely butcher all of these pronunciations. So look forward to that. We have, it's called Prohok Tsis, a Cambodian dish, which consists of Prohok, fermented fish, coconut milk, mint, choice of meat, fish sauce, palm sugar, and more. So one of the prompts I gave people was the best dish best dish on the planet, the best thing you could possibly eat. And the haiku is this. Umami, creamy, briny, sweet, I'm special, lush. Dip me with on 
Lonk. And thankfully, Getch has understood that. I have no idea what that is. And has put here that that is varieties of raw cooked vegetables that Cambodians usually eat with prohoc tis. And there's a picture there. It looks something that I would be quite keen to try. So, so thank you very much to Getch for that. Next up, we have the quiz. So we had an enrichment quiz a couple of days ago, uh, 30 questions with some college related trivia, some general trivia and some music trivia. I just want to shout out the winners of that again. So in first place, we had Emma from Adam Street Gardens. And in second, we had Brendan. And then in third, we had Angel and all of these winners, as well as getting house points, all received a lovely snack parcel from myself filled with all sorts of Japanese and Asian sweets and treats and chocolates and all sorts of bits and bobs. And that was that was how I managed to get as many people doing the quiz by enticing them with snacks, which I'm going to need to remember for the future. Before we move on, I want to just highlight today we had one of our few sport activities this week. We had basketball shootouts. And that was, I think, moved from earlier in the week because of the rain. But I want to shout out and announce that the winner of that is Andrea, who went down there and rather uns was unsurprised that she had beaten all of the other students there, all the boys and all the girls. And she came out and won the basketball shootout. So well done to Andrea. Next up, we have the fashion show. We gave them three briefs, three different sorts of outfit that we needed all of the students to do a, a presentation of us for. So the first one was trashing, which is something that we've done the last couple of years using bin bags and rubbish and recyclable things to make a, an outfit. And for that category, the winner was Tintin. So Tintin, I did actually see a, a, a sneak peek of him walking down the catwalk covered in bin bags. Um, I think he had a an ASOS parcel that was ripped open and used as some sort of cape, but uh, he, he was certainly strutting his stuff well. So the winner of that category goes to Tintin. The unloved wardrobe category. I kind of thought to myself, there's a lot of outfits in people's wardrobes that have gone unloved during the pandemic because we haven't had much opportunity to go out and go to fancy dinners and get dressed up. So I wanted to put an unloved wardrobe section in. And we had some wonderful dresses and outfits and suits. But the winner of this category was Yenik, who wore a lovely, I think it was like a white dress. But yes, the staff decided very comfortably that, uh, that you had won that category, Yenna. So well done. And finally, for Lockdown Chic, now, this isn't one which I actually saw myself, but I have I've had it described to me and I kind of wish that I had seen it. And the the lockdown chic, I kind of thought, well, let's take all of the the stereotypical things regarding the situation we're all in. So I'm thinking face masks, I'm thinking face shields, I'm thinking your comfy sweatpants that you pretend you're not wearing when you're presenting things to, I don't know, the college. Um and the winner of that category was Coco. Now, I heard that uh, Coco had, I think, some hand sanitizer that she applied to herself in the middle of the catwalk, um, which I think is is quite quite apt for, for the category that she was in. So well done to both to Tintin, Yenna and Coco for all of your victories. <laughs> up we will move on to the short stories so the first the first day of our creative challenges the creative conundrums the first day was a short story competition and for that i had six submissions from all over all over the student body and i'm going to read out one of them 
I'm going to choose Kim's. And she submitted this, and this is called Coming to Life. It started quickly at first, then grew louder and louder, until Laguna couldn't ignore it. She frowned and opened her eyes, turning to the source of the noise. It was the doorbell. Strange, she thought. She was in the study room, which the sound of the doorbell couldn't reach. It was approaching midnight too. She was only up because she and her housemaid needed to finish an article for a journal about the supernatural. Nine, she called out to said housemate. Answer the door already. After all, he was in the kitchen getting both of them a snack, much closer to the front door than she was. No reply. The doorbell rang again, and Laguna grudgingly headed to the front door. On the way, she passed the kitchen and looked inside. The cabinet door for late night snacks was open, but Nime himself was nowhere to be seen. Laguna had half expected this, since if Nime just didn't want to answer the door, he shouted back a reply along the lines of, answer it yourself, you lazy. But the house was dead silent. She had barely a second to wonder where he'd gone before the annoying doorbell went off again, and she snapped back, okay, I'm coming. Once the creature standing outside was easily over six feet tall, towering over her, but not so much that it couldn't come inside the house. Its eyes were blood red, pupils white, but staring straight at her. It had a pair of huge tusks jutting out of the lower lip, the tips stained with blood. It had two things that looked like scorpion tails under each arm, its dark gray hair long and matted. It roared, and one of the scorpion tails lunged forward, jabbing Laguna in the forearm. She stumbled, pain blinding her for a moment, but she gathered herself and ran as soon as the creature stepped towards her. Her first instinct was the back door. It was jammed. She was certain it hadn't been just this morning, but there was no time for the thought to take form or to fix the back door. She could still hear the creature growling and stomping around the living room. Laguna made her way to her room and hid in the closet as quickly and quietly as possible. She didn't dare move. This was the very creature they'd been writing about. And all the things that made it deadly, like extraordinary hearing, were running through her mind. She tried to remember its weaknesses, but her mind was going blank, filling itself with the growling. Overwhelmed, she shut her eyes. Silence. Laguna was confused by this. She hadn't covered her ears. Had all this been... No, it couldn't have been a dream. The wound on her forearm proved it. Was it all over then? Was she back in her chair, resting her eyes from facing the screen most of the day? She slowly opened her eyes. And that was Coming to Life by Kim. Let's move on. Next up, we have MasterChef. Now, MasterChef was run yesterday in the boarding houses and each boarding house. So Shand and Adam Street both had submissions for this. And each building has its own set of winners and pictures. So MasterChef is a, a competition that we run fairly often. Um, it could be either MasterChef or a more common variant being decided to do math this time and the canteen staff so kindly put together a wonderful display of ingredients and things that the students could come and take and put into their meals and I think it shows because some of the the quality of the meals we've had this year as always has been pretty outstanding so I'm going to open up this uh, yes yeah, so this was a dish by Wan Ni big fan of the tender stem broccoli in third place and this is just for shand house we have leticia and sabelle who did a beef and noodle dish unfortunately i don't have a photograph of that dish but they did come in third so that is leticia and sabelle in third place in second place we have moto with his steak and potatoes i looked at this and i thought there is no way that is a potato but if you, I'm sure if you craft it right and chisel it, and I'm not even quite sure how he managed to get that uh, that effect. But it does look absolutely fantastic. So steak and potatoes there from Moto in second place. Well done, Moto. And then in first place from King, we have a four layer terrine. Now I must say the presentation on this is just stunning. 
But yes, the winner of the Shanghai Master Chef was King with this lovely, appealing, aesthetically pleasing dish. We will move now over to Adam Street. I'm going to go in reverse order again. And we have four winners. So five pictures for four winners. In fourth place, representing Seacol, we have Catherine. I'm a bit of a cake fiend, and I can tell you that that cake looks fantastic. I'm not entirely sure what went into it, whether it was chocolate or fruit, but that, as a cake, would not look out of place in the front window of a bakery. In third place, also representing Seacol, we have Murat. Again, I think I think salmon has been a, a pretty a pretty popular choice this year. I'm not entirely sure what the purees were. I'm guessing we have some sort of either sweet potato puree there, maybe a pea puree at the top. But aesthetically alone, I think this one looks very, very pleasing. Well done, Murat. Second place for the Adam Street one, we have two pictures. We have Phoebe and Patricia Zell from Morgan. So here we have again salmon. I think that's on a on a bed of risotto. It looks a bit like risotto. Uh, again, really, really beautifully presented. Nice clean plate. And then we have a second picture of that one as well, which looks a little bit more my speed. Brown, something breaded, and then good old chips with I'm assuming nacho cheese. Lovely golden color on those chips. Wonderful. So that was second place, which means in first place with an absolute buffet of dishes. We have Farida and Hilton from Rubin. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So it looks like, so we've got rice. I think that's carrots on the top. We have a chicken, it looks a bit like a, we've got chicken and we've got beef. I think they fed the entire team of judges, but they were awarded the win from the judges down here in Adam Street. So well done to Farida and Hilton, again for Ruben. So well done to them. One of the other activities we've got, um, we have been doing scavenger hunts. So scavenger hunt has happened already in neighborhood and I believe in Adam Street. The Shand House one is going to be happening tomorrow afternoon, similar to one which was run a couple of months ago. But that will be, they'll be going around the boarding house looking for clues, doing tasks before being led on to the next one. I do have a couple of photos I was sent over from Julia, the house parent in neighborhood. And I'm gonna show some of these photos to you guys now. So we have some of the girls here over in the neighborhood following some clues around. I'm not sure what that, what that is in their hand. I think it looks a bit like, um, like origami. And then we had, it was a throwing, I think like bean bags into a pot. That is some severe, severe concentration. Wonderful. And the winners, I do have the winners of the scavenger hunt over in. So the winners of the scavenger hunt in neighborhood were Cherry, Izzy and Abike. So well done to those three for doing the first ever neighborhood scavenger hunt. Next up, a section I have been particularly eager to share with people. We did painting as one of our competitions. So it was, the students were invited to come down and take a canvas from us. We had two sizes, small and then a little bit smaller and some acrylic paints. And they had to just do a painting for us. There wasn't much in terms of, in terms of a brief, but I must say some of these submissions we've had have been absolutely incredible. So I'm going to actually show every single one that we received before I announce who we've chosen as the winners. So here we have, presumably, Belle from Beauty and the Beast with her, her telltale bag, uh, bag, basket, and notebook. Very nice classical painting style with this one. Next, we have this striking, very striking one here, is it Renee's from Franklin. I to be honest, I don't think a photo does this one much justice because this is a, a very, very fantastic submission. The way that the reds and the greens come together on the paint on the 
on the canvas is is stunning. So I, well done, Renee. It's very, very good. Next up, we have this one. Now we will scroll up and down. I believe this one was Haley's. So it's hard to tell in the photo, but the the sort of dappled blotches on the arms of this woman are quite raised off the canvas itself. So it really does come off as like the the little flourishy bits on a on a bit of lace on a on a dress. The face, I think, is absolutely fantastic. Very soft, but also quite defined. Next up, we have this. Now, back in my day of doing GCSE and A level art, this was very much the sort of artwork that I would I would produce. Very stark, black on color. A lot of bright colors in this one. Balloons kind of makes you think of what is over that horizon. Where are they going? But some lovely use of colours there. Yeah, so this one was from Sabelle. Next up, we have a submission from Ling. Now, this one's quite, it's got a, a strange mixture of the mediums. You've got a, a very anime inspired, bold, outlined look here of the central character. But then with the background, it's quite dappled, it's quite mottled. It looks like, like you have a character from one form of animated fiction going into a complete different like into a painting of something else so the way that these two styles are married together in this i think is fantastic next up from carrie we have something that's very miyazaki feeling whoops so it gives me it gives me studio ghibli vibes with the use of the color the simplicity of the characters i think it's it's another lovely lovely submission Next up, we have Crescent. Now this one, I quite like initially that you have a square picture on a non-square canvas. So the framing of this, I think is quite interesting. And the way that the, the color of the skin has been blended in is also quite particular. It gives me album cover vibes. And so Crescent, I don't know if you're ever planning on releasing uh, a fire mixtape or quite how you're you're going to use this album cover but i think you need to have a music career just so that you can make this your album cover because it gives me gives me very late 60s prog rock album cover vibes very good next up we have from emma so if you look at it one way it could sort of be a christmas tree but this way up is the way it is supposed to be so we have a, a mountain scene being reflected in the water i quite like the the choppiness of the blacks it's quite a it's quite a harsh application of the paint but i think it, it really works quite well with the rest of the picture quite a stark shadow yeah very nice this one so well done to emma next up we have omar so Omar clearly has uh, has painted SpongeBob. Omar has done SpongeBob, and I think when we put up the these paintings around the boarding houses, I think I know exactly where I'm going to put this. But this is a very a very good painting by Omar of SpongeBob SquarePants. Next up from Julia, we have a wonderful wonderful painting of Shand House. We see there we have Starbucks and one stop below. Starbucks is, is closed, but one stop is not. And here we see the balloons carrying it up away, much like the Pixar movie Up. Oh, the places you will go. This is a wonderful picture. And once we've shown all the paintings, we might see where this picture has already found its home. So well done, Julia. Next up, we have Donald. Now, a very lovely blending of the paint. Now, the, the paints in this one almost look like they could be chalk pastels because of the way that they've been blended. But it is still paint. I really do quite like this one. This one, this one gives me, it gives me Starburst vibes, like Starburst Sweets. Or Sherbet. 
Yeah, I do really quite like this one from Donald. Lover. Well done, Donald. Next up from Getch. We have a, a, a bird. Well, it's definitely a bird, but what bird it is, I'm not entirely sure, but it is cute. It is cute as all heck with its lovely little glistening eyes and its big eyelashes. I tell you what it reminds me of. Another one that reminds me of Pixar's Up. It reminds me a little bit of Kevin, the big bird in Up. But some wonderful, some wonderful feathers. Definitely looks like a little baby bird of whatever it is. But very cute. Unrelentingly cute. Well done, Gatch. Next up from Jackie Lee. Now this is a wonderful, wonderful use of the brush. So this is, it's quite a, a classical style. I think there were a lot of homes in the UK around the mid to late eighties that had a, a picture that was probably very, very similar to this. I know that my parents did in their house. It's a very, it's a very reliable form of art, especially even coming down to as much as the, the river in the center with a mountain and then the trees on the sides. It's, but I think seeing it with such strong colors, especially on the sky is something that you don't typically see in those styles of paintings. But I think here it works really, really well. And the texture of the branches on the trees is 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 really gorgeous. So well done, Jackie. This this is a very, very good submission. So for the winners of the paintings, I will go in reverse order once again. So in third place, we have the one from Haley. I think the reason I'm holding it tentatively is because it's actually still wet. I think for the face alone the the delicate strokes and the smoothness of the detail within the face as well as the rest of it i think it's this is a very 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 good submission and i think a couple of us have looked at the the lady in this and thought she looks like someone and i think everybody has different ideas of who it looks like i've heard lady gaga i'm not sure if i agree with that one but yeah I think this is a very good submission, Haley, and you have come in third place. So well done, Haley. In second place, we have Renee's. So Renee's again. I think it's. I'm hoping that the colours will come through a little bit better on on here than they did in the photo. The way that the the really bright reds intertwined with the greens and then obviously with the face in the middle i think it's it's absolutely stunning absolutely stunning so renee well done you have taken second place with this lovely lovely painting and then in third place in uh, first place we have ling so ling has also as you can see painted the borders which also gives it even though as a canvas, it isn't framed. It gives it quite a strong framing in itself. But the detail that she's gone to with the black lines and also the marrying of the different form, art forms together, I think has created a very, very appealing canvas here. Now, I will be honest, it was very tough for us to decide who the winners would be because they're all so good that they are all going to be Put up on the wall somewhere i don't think there's a single one that we don't want to put on display so every single one of them is going to be put up and i think this is definitely something we'll be doing again in the future if this is the sort of quality that we can expect so well done ling you have come in first place with the painting so we have one more to go before we come on to our final category which is the films so our penultimate one is costume design so on Friday, I think it was, we had a costume design competition and we had some submissions. I'm going to bring those up now. So we have one winner for this category, but I will show you. Let's go tab costume shit. Okay, so here we have a submission by Kim and this is Ruby Storm, a superhero. And if we zoom in, we'll see what we actually have here. So he's got the goggles, lightning rubies, 
activators on his shoulders. The light coloured is the storm cloud, the dark is the camouflage. They've got a quarter staff, a lightning resistant cloth, which I suppose is quite handy if you're handling so much lightning, and then a pouch for the lightning rubies. And for good measure, levitation boots. Next up, we have our winner in this category, and this was from Yasmin Kwong. And this is a Chinese wedding dress. I'm going to scroll down because this is a long one. Now, I really like the detail that's gone into the, the gold patterns on this one. Very intricate, very detailed, very ornate. So this is our winning costume from Yasmin. As soon as I saw this picture, when it popped up in my inbox, I actually went straight to Google and looked at real traditional Chinese wedding dresses because I thought they can't be that intricate, but they, they truly are. And I think this is a very good, a very good representation of that. So Yasmin, you have won the costume design with this exceptional, exceptional picture. And finally, we have another wedding dress submission and this one's from rachel and this is a woman in white a traditional white wedding dress with some lovely ruffles lovely backless dress so thank you for that submission rachel and now we will move on to our final section which is the quick movie challenge the so the the actual uh, prompts that they had were things like uh, in reverse, life in the fast lane, make yourself disappear, creep out the judges, that sort of thing. And we had two videos that attempted to meet those briefs. And I'm going to show both of them to you. So we had two groups who submitted these. I'm going to show you the one which came in second place first. And this is from a group made up of Lewis, Gabriel and Audrey. And their prompt, the prompts that they chose were in reverse and make yourself disappear. And this film, they have told me, is called Boba. Have you been to the city center? I have you tried the boba tea? With the premium quality. Not sponsored. I go for the great fries. Try some Audrey. Guys, I don't like boba tea. Oh, wow. Wow. You're really quite <laughs> you know, This so boba tea is not leaving you. Bye. See? Both of them. Yeah, both of them. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Have a bad day, Saturday. Wow, this boba is pretty good. Yeah, premium quality boba. I really like that. Mm, it's very mm. good. Oh! It's Audrey who doesn't drink boba, you know? Oh, this girl! Just... Whoa! Go I away really faster. Like Go away faster. Yeah. Get outside. Get out. Bro. I'm depressed. I don't have friends just because I don't drink boba. Should I drink it? Mm, maybe it's worth a try. Wow, that's really good. Wow. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again 
when I see you again. Oh my god, Audrey, you're addicted to Bulba, the one with the greatest quality and the pride. Damn, who knew all the planes we flew, good things we've been through, that I'd be standing here, right here, talking to you about another pass. I knew we'd love to hit the road and laugh. I have no money. What do I do now? Boba, you're my only friend now. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are, you are, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are, you are, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are, you are, you are, you are what you eat. With the greatest quality, it's what you eat. Savage love, there's somebody, there's somebody break your heart Looking like an angel but you're savage love When you kiss me I know you don't get too fast But I still want that If I woke up without you I don't know what I would do Thought I could be single forever Oh my god So that was, that was, that was something <laughs> I think now I've watched it a second time, I can kind of see a little bit more where the prompts came in, the the in reverse and the and the make yourself disappear. For our last section and the last piece of the Enrichment Week presentation puzzle, we have our final video from our reliable multi multi time filmmaking crew of Moto, Josh, Andrew, and Timothy. We have our final quick video. This is called The Note, and the, the prompts which this team went for were Life in the Fast Lane and An Incredible Shot. So I will leave it to you to try and work out where those are. Okay, so we have our final movie. Okay, this is The Note. <laughs>
Well done to Moto, Josh, Andrew, and Timothy. You guys have won the quick movie challenge. And with that, all that remains is for me to say thank you, everybody, for coming and taking a look at what everybody has been up to this week. Um, it's We appreciate you taking some time out of your day, coming and looking at what, what the students have been doing to keep active, keep creative during, during the enrichment week. Um, we're very happy with the amount of work and the quality of the of the things that the students have uh, have managed to do this week so thank you all for coming and sharing with us and most of all thank you to the students who have taken part and jumped right into some of these uh, activities some students who've who've entered almost every single one of them some who've only entered one uh, we will we will be doing a lot more of this in the future because this has been a uh, a good a good experience for everybody involved so thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening bye bye